Tommy Dennis Prager here. It's a, a delight to welcome to the show Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy, who is a real ally, ideologically, and really in every other way, but the ideology is the key. And so, Senator, welcome to the Dennis Prager Show. Hey, Dennis, thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. Are you, are, are you right now in the Senate building? Where are you? I am right now in a New Orleans rainstorm getting inside a car so I don't get drenched. <laughs> that is funny. It's good now. I picture I picture things better now. So you're back home. I, I want to ask you a human question before we get into politics. It's a tough one for you to answer, but, but I uh, so I'll, I'll accept whatever you say. How difficult is it to for Republicans and Democrats in the Senate to relate, given uh, the the scorched earth tactics that, that I ascribe to the Democrats? It depends upon the Democrat. It depends upon the issue. If you look at the shenanigans in the Judiciary uh, uh, Committee over the last couple of days, I have an incredibly hard time relating to someone as serious who is making misleading statements, innuendo, etc., uh, all for political uh, all for political advantage, but to do nothing to illuminate an issue. Incredibly hard to relate to that. On other things, um, you know, how do we lower drug costs? I can, I, I can relate to people, and I actually have partners across the aisle. So, uh, on, a, on a daily basis, do, do you feel tension uh, when you're with your colleagues? Oh, not at all. Oh, very uh, interesting. I, I, I imagine that you did. That's very interesting. You know, uh, Dennis, you live in a very stressful environment. You've got a radio program. You've got people coming after you. You've got um, uh, uh, folks trying to kick you off their social media platforms. And if I ask you, do you go home at night and sleep well, you'd say you sleep like a baby. I do. That's part of, that's, that's part of what we have in this environment. If we're going to defend our principles, people are coming after us, and it's just something we have to get used to. I see. Okay, that's fair, and, and, that's, the, and, the, and that's the way life goes. Did you? Do you personally have any reaction to this New York Times piece by a, quote, senior administration official? Uh, I have a reaction along the lines of the newspaper that clearly doesn't like Trump with an anonymous person whom we know nothing about. Um, so that doesn't mean that it's wrong, doesn't mean it's right, it just means that's the context. On the other hand, I prefer to let results speak for themselves. We have an economy that is booming. We have a... Uh, uh, deregulation, we have lower taxes, we have a foreign policy at North Korea where we've made progress where people did not think we could make. Uh, ISIS is on the, on the run, and so I think results speak more loudly. Do advisors have an input? Absolutely. Every administration, every president. Uh, so it's a little bit hard for me to separate out all this without just looking at the results. Well, that's what I've been telling my listeners since he was elected. Just look at the results. I, and, and how could a Republican, even a McCain-supporting Republican, deny it? What is your take on the Mueller investigation? Uh, it's going on. It's going on a long time. Um, it has to come to completion. Um, and um, I, I, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it because it's going to happen. And I'm not sure me saying anything is going to affect whether or not it does. And once it happens, then we'll deal with the results. All right, that's fair. Do you, do, well, my take, so perhaps you want, might want to react to this. My take is, forgetting the Mueller investigation, just this, the preoccupation of the media for two years with collusion between the, the Trump campaign and Vladimir Putin strikes me that when the president says witch hunt, I, I think there's legitimacy to that reaction. I think there is legitimacy to that reaction, particularly when every president since uh, FDR has had an attempt to have a, some relationship with the head of either the USSR and or Russia. And going back to results, the fact is, is that under this administration as opposed to the last, we've been much tougher on Russia. We've given arms to the Ukraine. We have confronted them within Syria. Uh, we have put sanctions, whereas formerly they were not. And so if you just look at results, it's hard to say that we've cozied up. That's what I would think. So do 
you have another moment? i got to take a commercial break. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Speaking to U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana. I'm Dennis Prager. I'm speaking with Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy. It was in a downpour in New Orleans, and uh, I appreciate his uh, being on. Google refused a Senate request, uh, whereas I believe, uh, uh, let's see, who, who did show up? Facebook and Twitter. Google did not show up. Uh, you have any comments on that? If they continue to ignore what's happening on, uh, let me start over. When Prager U is suffering discrimination from social media, we got a problem. And yes, there are corporations that can have corporate policies, but to assume they don't have an inordinate influence upon our culture and daily life and political viewpoint is absurd. And, and for Google not to come to thumb its nose at the Congress, I think is tempting fate. So let's, let's go as far as you're capable, and I totally understand w w that there are borders here, but our boundaries, but I... Uh, I tell people who ask, why did, why did PragerU sue uh, Google, which owns YouTube, uh, for putting now 80 of our videos? And, and you have to understand, and I know you know, Senator, and I, I'm very grateful for your defense of PragerU in Congress. I, I just uh, want to tell you, among the 80 uh, that are, are on the list is George Will's uh, five-minute video on why, Amer why the quintessential American sport is baseball. It, it, it's it's it actually reached a level of absurdity, but of course any video that defends the United States is almost automatically put on the uh, restricted list. So I tell people, if Delta Airlines announced, if you come on board with the New York Times, we will let you have your seat, but if you come on with the Wall Street Journal, you cannot. That's my analogy to their to answer their question. Well, they're private; they can decide what they do. Is that a fair analogy? I think it is a fair analogy, if you will, if you have a counter that you invite people. In fact, you sell them hamburgers at the counter. You've now become a place of business. Should you have to treat everybody equally, even though? you are a private enterprise. I think we have decided that is the case. And um, uh, and in this case, when folks are clearly within the norm, uh, the spectrum of acceptable ideas, Prager U is a huge example, you should not be denying them a hamburger at your counter. So unless, of course, you've got a prejudice against Prager U and the viewpoint, in that case, it's not against hate speech. It's just, it's just against either baseball being an American pastime or uh, uh, other things that, that give a conservative viewpoint. So it, it, this is where I said I may come up against a, a, a border or a boundary, but the, is it possible that Congress will have to pass some law in this regard? I think Congress, as a conservative, I, of course, rather government not be involved, but I am very sensitive to the fact that these corporations have this uh, monopolistic, uh, have a monopoly power over viewpoints being expressed. And I certainly think it is to be explored. Sometimes that exploration cle you know, clears up the issue. But again, when Google doesn't show up, you wonder just how much they are listening. And so, Dennis, I am uh, open to solutions that make sure that our public discourse is not stifled. And I'm not being careful for the purpose of being careful. It's just that whenever you start talking about wielding the incredible no, power of, course, of the state, of course. you want to be incredibly circumspect. One final question on that. Do you, do you recall anybody else being invited or asked to come to the U.S. Senate and saying no? Uh, no, I can't. Wow. There must have been somebody. Right, no, I'm There's sure, but you body. can't, right, but all right. But uh, what yeah. Google did is astonishing. The Google, 
the arrogance, forgetting the politics, just the arrogance, I don't owe the American people through its premier representatives, the U.S. Senate, U.S. Senate, I don't even owe them the courtesy of addressing the issue. Okay, it's, uh, it, it, that, that tells you something about uh, Google, uh, and uh, I'm not shocked. I just want to tell you that uh, I, as an American citizen, and certainly as president of Prague University, are very, very, very grateful to you for your work on, on behalf of my beloved country and, of course, PragerU. Just wanted you to know that. And let me return that compliment for you, who actually gives positive, constructive, conservative values to a nation which sometimes is not quite sure of first principles. Uh, I'm looking at these socialists running right now and thinking that the sacrifice of property rights inherent within socialism somehow is a good thing. Um, positive, constructive, conservative viewpoints. Thank you, Dennis, and thanks for those who study these because we need to be able to advocate that positive vision of what America is and what America can be even more so in the future as opposed to these folks, some of whom are so destructive uh, and and yet don't yet even understand the destructiveness of their ideas. Destructive is the word, sir. Well, I look forward to meeting you in Washington. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. We have people fighting. He's one of them, and that's... I wanted you to be aware of that.